Hello everyone. In my previous video, I built a voice assistant with ChatGPT. And in today's video, I'd like to show you a new version of that code with ChatGPT 4.0. By the end of this video, you will be able to build a voice assistant like this. Hi, Jack. How are you? I'm just a computer program, so I don't have feelings, but thanks for asking. How can I assist you today? Tell me a joke. Sure, here's one for you. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Do you have another one for children? Absolutely. Here's one for kids. Why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Okay, you get the idea. So, before I talk about the code, I'd like to show you a diagram showing the benchmark test of GPT-40. If you look at this chart, you can see GPT-40 is very impressive when you compare with, for example, Gemini Pro 1.5 not only for text evaluation, but also for audio translation, as well as vision understanding. All right, let's get back to the code and see how can we build a voice chatbot with ChatGPT 4.0. I developed this code based on a previous version I created for Google Gemini. In today's video, I'd like to highlight the changes I made to the code. In this program, we're going to use three threads to process the reply from AI. On the first thread, we will handle the text generated by AI. And then on the second thread, we convert that text to audio. And on the third thread, we play that audio back. Over here, we initialize the plugin package and we use one channel here. And then we create a client for handling the OpenAI module. Over here, I define a today variable, which we are going to use in the name of our log file. And then over here, I define three counters. And so the first one will count the number of text segments generated by the AI. And the second one will count the number of audio segments generated by the text-to-speech engine. The last one will be the number of audio segments we played on the third thread. So those variables will be very handy when we measure the progress of each thread, and that will allow us to exit each thread properly. This variable here stores the conversation between the user and the AI in the dictionary data tab, as you can see over here. This chat function will be running on thread one. So over here, the request is a question from the user. And TextQ stores the segments of text generated by the AI. This is an event variable. So once this is set, that means the AI is finished generating the response. So at first, we put the question from the user into the dictionary format, and then we send that to AI for a response. So over here, I set the maximal token into 100. So you can increase or decrease this variable if you would like to have a longer or shorter reply. Over here, we will stream the reply so that we can process the reply from AI and then play at the same time. Over here, I define several variables. The shorter string stores one segment of the reply from AI. And the reply here is the entire reply from the AI. And see text here is just one piece of information from AI, and then we save everything in the log file. So to process the response from AI, once we get a response from AI into this C text, so this one could be a word, it could be a symbol. So if this is a word, and then we will save that into a short string here, and then we empty this variable. If this C text is a period, for example, and then we will save that period into the shorter string and empty this variable. So this shorter string here is a segment of the reply from the AI. It could be part of the sentence. It could be entire sentence. And then we remove the stars and we save that into the text queue here. So over here, we count that as our first segment. And then we save the shorter string into the reply here. So this reply is going to be the entire reply from the AI because we do not know whether the end of the sentence is one of this or something else. And end over here, if there's still some content in this variable or this variable. So we will save that as the last segment into the text queue. So we save this reply into this dictionary as a response from the AI so that our next question will be relevant to the previous question. 
At the end here, we save the reply into our log file. When we set this variable here, we, it means we already finished all the tasks on the thread one. So this function here, speak text, we convert this text variable into an audio file and then play back. On the second thread, we will convert the text segment into audio segment with a text-to-speech engine. This text queue here is a list of segments of text from the AI. And then this is an event which signals the completion of the second thread. This is the event which indicates the completion of the tasks on thread 1. This is the audio queue which stores the segments of audio data. The stop event signals the completion of all the tasks on three threads. So if the stop event is not set, we will continue processing the reply from the AI. So over here, we get the first segment of the text from the AI into this text variable here. If this text variable is longer than one, we will convert that into audio file. Otherwise, we will skip that. So to convert that into audio file, at first, we allocated some space in the memory, and then we use the Google TDS to convert the text to audio segment. And we write into this file here, and then we put that file into our audio queue. So this audio queue is a list of audio segments we are going to play back later. So to use this function here, we need to set the language and a top level domain name. I'm using US. If you are from a different region or using a different language, you can change the language code and the top level domain according to this chart. So once that is done, we call task down and then continue to the next segment from the AI. Once we finish all the text segments, this number here is going to be the same as the number of segments generated by the AI. If that's the case, we will set the TTS down and then we will clear the memory and break from this loop. So that will be the end of the second thread. So on the third thread, we are going to play this audio segment one by one. Similarly, we allocated some space in the memory and then we get the first audio segment into this memory here. We sync back to the beginning of the file and then we play that audio segment and we count that as the first segment. So once we finish playing the first audio segment and then we go back to the beginning here and we play the second one, etc. Once we finish playing all the audio segments, this number here will be the same as the number of audio segments generated by the text-to-speech engine. So if that's the case, we will clear the memory and break from this loop. That means we finished all the tasks for thread three. This function over here will save the conversation between the user and the AI into a log file. This main function is pretty much the same as before. I'm gonna skip this part here. Please check my previous video to understand this part of the code. I'm going to put a link in the description below to my previous video. So that will be the end of this video. Please check our GitHub page for the Python code and a detailed instruction on how to use that. Leave your questions and suggestions in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please like this video, give it a thumb up. Please subscribe to our channel as I have more videos coming up about AI, large language models, robots, IoT device. See you next time. Bye bye.